Hello, good afternoon and welcome to the law. This is your legal light. It is your health law. And this afternoon, we are discovering the law through the eyes of journalists who have been covering the courts. It's not an easy thing to cover the courts. Let's get to know what goes on in their minds, in their preparations, and in their appreciation of the proceedings. You are also invited to ask me questions. They may also be able to answer some of your questions about recent proceedings in the courts that you have questions about. It could be in the court, it could be outside of the court, but for as long as it relates to law, that you need some understanding. That's what we do here on our weekly legal clinic, The Law. We'll be right back. I'm Samson Ladianyanini. Welcome back. I'm Samson Ladi Anyeni. I've just opened to the Constitution in Chapter 11. Chapter 11 begins with Article 125. Article 125 reads, Justice emanates from the people and shall be administered in the name of the Republic by the judiciary, which shall be independent and subject only to this constitution. I take that again. Justice emanates from the people. That's you. Yes. You watching me right now. Justice emanates from you. But it is administered in the name of the Republic by some people who have been trained as judges. And they are supposed to be independent and they are subject only to this constitution. Clause two, citizens may exercise popular participation in the administration of justice through the institutions of public and customary tribunals and the jury and assessor system. Did you hear that? That you can participate in the administration of justice through certain processes, including the jury and assessor systems. We are having an interaction with journalists. Mutala Inusa, he's a legal affairs correspondent for the EIB network. Joining him shortly is Latif Idrisu, legal affairs correspondent for Joy News. Mutala, welcome to the law. Thank you very much for having great, me. Great, great, great. How long have you been reporting from the courts? Well, <laughs> do I even remember? <laughs> it's been quite a long, as far back in, as in 2012. 2012. That's a long time. Quite a long time. That's over a decade Absolutely. of reporting from the courts. Do you enjoy it? <laughs> uh, beginning uh, was, <laughs> was difficult. Honestly, beginning <laughs> was very difficult. But now uh, I'm having fun. You're having fun. having fun. It was difficult. What made it difficult? The language, the terms, and then the kind of, you know, the court has got, it's all about processes. So if you don't understand the processes in the courtroom, at one point in time, one lawyer is on his feet. Mm -hmm. Within a minute or two, another person is saying some words, so you are confused. What is happening? Who is saying what? What is, what is the direction? What is happening? Then you get confused. So mm. these are, in fact, the whole process, the language, you get confused, mm. honestly, you get confused. Uh, so I remember even in the, in the early stages, sometimes I could go to court for a whole three months and I can't even put it, uh, something on paper. I can't even write anything. I just three go months after you had started reporting after, from the yeah, court? When I started. I go, just go listen. Then I come and come and read report of seniors mm. who have been, oh, this is how it go about. All right. And all that. All right. So it wasn't easy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let's start with... <clears throat> me trying to explain something that you have brought up. Later, we'll get to 
see some of the recent um, public interest mm. cases that you have been reporting and how you have reported them, sure. how you have appreciated the processes, what are the issues on your mind that you want to ask questions about. But on the matter of sitting in a courtroom, a lawyer standing to their feet and doing what you call the advocacy, they are making a presentation of their case or arguing a motion, so to speak. And then before you say, Jack, they are sitting and somebody is standing. Yes. Now that doesn't confuse you anymore Absolutely. because you know that it is procedure. Absolutely. That's what we are buried in, rituals. So if, for example, I filed what is called a motion before the court, asking the court for, say, injunction for... Uh, my client against the opposing party because maybe it's a land dispute and my client believes that the land belongs to them and there is somebody else on it who is trespassing because you are entering the land and doing things when you don't have power to be on it. We say you are trespassing. That is an illegal you know, thing to do. It's a criminal thing to do. Sure. Right. When I stand to my feet, because it's my motion, which I filed, and I added what you call the affidavit, which tells the story. When I get to the court, I must at least let the other party have it at least about four days before we go to move the motion, That's right. ordinarily. I stand to my feet to start the argument. When I start arguing, the other lawyer is entitled to cut in if they object to something I'm saying right. or if they have an objection on the basis of law that even what I'm coming to move or discuss with the judge is not backed by law. Once I stand to my feet, the very minute I say I am moving a motion for an injunction, they are entitled to stand up and say, because there's something wrong with my process, which is fundamentally wrong, it does not allow me to continue to make the argument, they will raise what you call the preliminary legal objection to it. Once that lawyer stands up, the ethics of the profession is that I sit down. Then they are heard. If they are talking and I also stand up, once I stand to my feet, they are also supposed to do what? Sit down and hear me make my case. So don't get confused about that yeah, so at all. You, 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 the point that you were making, so the point is, why would you not allow the person to land mm -hmm. so that once the person lands at full stop, then you can come in? Right. But at some point in time, you notice that the person starts to move, make a submission, and you want to raise an objection. You don't know where he's arriving. Right. At. So, so at there are times, time, you, by law, you are not supposed to allow them to, to have finished a point. That is if you have a legal objection to what they are going to argue on. For example, we have what we call statute of limitation. A statute of limitation says there's something you can bring to the court within certain periods. If you sit down and allow for a certain period to elapse, maybe it says there's something you can bring to the court within two years after the thing has happened, within six months after the things, thing has happened, like human rights actions. Um, three years after the thing has happened, 12 years after the thing has happened, but after those periods, you are not allowed to come to, come court. to court. If you get up to talk, and I want to object to that, mm -hmm. I don't even need to have filed anything in opposition to you. I can stand to my feet and, and say that what you are bringing is not allowed. So you are not supposed not to be supposed to make it. Uh, but in the ordinary thing, uh, uh, scheme of things, if you have filed your motion, I have filed my own in opposition, I'm supposed to sit down quietly, listen to you to finish. The judge may have questions to ask you, the lawyer. Then you give your explanations. Once you finish, you sit down. Then the other lawyer will rise up and then also argue their opposition with the law and the facts. That's how Absolutely. it works. Yeah. yeah. And once they are done, you can only rise up again if you have 
legal points to raise. Otherwise, you are not allowed. If I yeah. hold your peace. Right. Yeah. Okay, so uh, as Latif gets ready to join us, the bits that you have enjoyed, tell us about that. <laughs> tell us something really enjoyable that you talk about. Well, when you notice, like you mentioned, it's all about procedure, processes, yeah. and uh, every application or motion that is filed has its own implication and what is its aim at. So you'll be there, there's an ex party motion. What is that? You're looking around. You get confused. You are there. There's a motion for interlocutory injunction. Correct. Then you hear interim injunction. Yeah. Then all, all, all those words. Interim injunction, interlocutory injunction, Absolutely. perpetual injunction. Absolutely. There are three different Absolutely. classes of uh -huh. injunctions. So if you are breaking these, two, these three things down, what are the differences? Right. So the interim, you see, it's normally granted for 10 days. It's an injunction that is intended to preserve a situation that if it is not done, something may go bad. So the lawyer who is making the application for it normally will go what we call ex parte. Those are some of the terms you Absolutely. Use. So <laughs> go ex parte. Ex parte means so which you know was, by now. Yeah, of course, it's close on the blind okay. side of the other party. Yeah, so, so you go on the blind side of the other party. So this is where initially... So let, let, me, let, me, okay. let me explain the three quickly. <laughs> So you go ex parte, you and the judge alone. The opposite side is not in court. But because it's very urgent, you don't need to have informed the opposite side. Because if you inform them, there will be delay. Absolutely. You see how it works? Good. So you go alone, and the judge is allowed by law to grant, to determine in their discretion that what you are asking for is genuine so they can grant you the injunction. But they grant it only for 10 days. After 10 days, it has expired. The injunction is no more. But what lawyers would normally do is that by the ninth day or the 10th day, they would have done a repeat of that application on notice to the opposite okay. side. Then you come and argue. That one, if you argue that, it becomes what is known as an interlocutory injunction. So the interlocutory injunction, when that one is granted, unlike the interim injunction, which will be for just for 10 days, the interlocutory one will be granted if it's granted. It will be in force for the entire period of the case. So maybe the case will take, uh, the substantive case will take about one year to be concluded. Yes. There'll be an injunction in place. You get that? Yeah. Then the perpetual injunction, that one is granted on the day of judgment. Okay. When the case itself has come to an end, then the court believes that even though one party has won, the other party must still be stopped from trying to go onto, maybe it's a property, from trying to go onto the property. So you get perpetual injunction, injunction for your life. You are not supposed to try <laughs> to claim that something is yours. Or yeah, that is where contract right. will always come at you. Right. So you were going to make a point with these kind of jargons. Absolutely. So ex party. So you come to court as a reporter. <laughs> all you came to, uh, to do is that you notice there's a case in court and all that before you realize uh, one party is moving an ex party motion. The other party is absent. And then the court grants it. Mm. Then you're like, what is happening? We came here for this very case and what has happened. So if you don't understand the, the processes and the procedure, right. you might even be tempted to think that the ex party motion that was granted is rather the substantive one. So that's okay. where the dangers are. Right. And that is where the terms and all things I have, come to I've heard, <laughs> I've heard and read journalists make the mistake. When the when applications which are interlocutory, interlocutory means they are within the substantive main case. So the main case, when we finish the main case, you get what is called the judgment. judgment. Absolutely. But the decisions that are arrived at within the main case, they are called rulings. I hear some journalists say, the court has given a judgment Absolutely. that says ABC. When they, what they really mean is a ruling. <laughs> it's a ruling. <laughs> but it's one thing that I always fight people out okay. all the time. Even on my social media pages, I always try to pull them there. Mm. There's a clear difference between a judgment 
and ruling, like That's you, right. you mentioned. So That's right. a case like, um, let's see, uh, the Richard Sky one. You can take a live case. Absolutely. And we can we, talk about, we we're, we're talking about procedure. Absolutely. We're not talking about substantive Absolutely. matters. So um, let me, even that one is even too long. So we just have a case like, um, which recent, let's the Richard Sky case, for mm -hmm. instance, where the party made a So in Richard Sky case, now we know that there are two Cases, cases yes. uh, Richard Sky and Dr. Amanda uh, Odoi. Odoi. Yes. They are in the Supreme Court asking that the quote unquote anti gay bill that has been passed by Parliament offends the Constitution. Constitution. And to the extent that it offends the Constitution, the bill should be Not nullified. Absolutely. Right. So go ahead. You are yes. using that for an example. Yes. So at the last court sitting, there were certain submissions that were made in relation to lawyer for um, the applicant, mm -hmm. Richie Sky, okay. wanting to amend certain portions of his motion and everything. Okay. So in that context, when the Supreme Court came out, with it, the court is ruling on a request put for it. So you can't say judgment, but That's most right. often than not, we hear people say judgment. So Judgment simply put finality. So to when the you case. hear your colleagues, you have done this for a decade <laughs> and more. When you hear your colleagues report and say judgment, what do you do? So most often, how do you than feel first of all? Most often than not, I feel we are still not there yet. We are so mm. disappointing our people because if somebody like me, who many know that I am always around the court, somebody call. And one interesting thing about what we do is that when somebody else makes make a mistake. They won't single out that person. Mm. They say all of you. I've had situations where from, from the top and all that, and I have to say, no, call the individual people and let them know what the challenge is. Don't lump all of us together. But as they sometimes you have to, behind the scenes, engage the person, look, check this, your, 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 your rights up again. This is what it is. And behind the scenes, after the, the, a decision from court, if there's, the understanding is not clear and all that, we do engage, we don't consult. Lawyers are available, some friends are. Me, for instance, there are a lot of things that I do. If there's a case that I do not ask it well, understand certain things. Mm. Right? If I'm, in, if I'm in doubt, if I have some confusion, I have some lawyers that I'll quickly get to. Okay. I follow this case. This is how it went. This is one. This is what happened. Between this and it, where, where do I draw the line? Then they say, okay, this is what it means. Right. Then you are clear. Be just before you even go. So those terms, people think that, was it? for instance, just recently, mm -hmm during the ambulance case, after the hearing, then there's a report going on after, at the end of the trial. And I was like, hmm? the trial has not ended mm -hmm. yet. Yes, yeah, at the end of the trial. Yeah. So this one, if just if you have a would you cause you right now? <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh -huh. so situations like that. And there are some point in time also, you, you, you get confused. I, I keep telling people that, Every word that is used in court mm. has its own meaning. Don't All think right. that it's just a normal English that mm. we just go and write. Right. So, for instance, the court but, will say that by the end of this month, let's end uh, arguments or let's end evidence. Mm. Then you say the court wants to so you want to deliver judgment. Mm. The court didn't say that. The okay. court is saying that by, by the end of the month, at least let's, let's be done with the argument. Then we think about judgment. So if you don't understand it that way, before you realize you're going to say the court said that at the end of the you're going to pronounce judgment. And you right. put yourself if you are <laughs> just joining us, this is the law. And we are trying to appreciate the processes of the court in the eyes of the court reporters. Uh, you call them uh, court correspondents. Um, and they are just being as raw as they can, as frank as they can, to discuss with us what they go to court, what they see, and how they themselves appreciate those matters. Mutala Inusa is a legal affairs correspondent with the EIB network. Latif Idris um, Idrisu of um, Joy also will join us uh, shortly. So, I, I, for example, I know a number of journalists who will call me mm -hmm. and seek clarity Absolutely. on these uh, terminologies and no one can blame you because that's not your training. Your Absolutely. training is not a lawyer. And in the law court, you will definitely hear a lot of these terminologies. A lot, lot, right. a lot of them. Sechurari, um, uh -huh. uh, Mandemos. <laughs> Sechurari, Mandemos. Mandemos. You hear Happiest Corpus. Uh, Senedier. 
Absolutely. So, right. in, in, in a context of things, if you do not understand these um, words that are being used, that right. is where you even get confused right. at once. So you don't even know mm. what is happening. Mm. The, the, the argument itself is so, 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 so technical. Re, re, the, so I don't forget, I'm coming to a point where you say, when you are not too sure, you try to contact lawyers to explain to you. In a situation where a good number of the public interest cases may have a political you know, orientation, how sure are you that the one you are talking to is not giving you an explanation <laughs> which accords with a certain political view Absolutely. of uh, a partisan view of the case. That's what I, I want you to keep in mind sure. and come back to how you are able to do that so you don't report and get into trouble. Absolutely. But because you raised Mandamu, Seshorai Rai, and we mentioned that the case has been adjourned Sinidie or when you hear that, that it's just it's an agent Sinidie, and some of the journalists will say that to you, they are not supposed to be saying that to you. They, they are <laughs> supposed to tell you that the case has been adjourned indefinitely. It has been adjourned without a date. That's all that it means. There are situations where cases will be adjourned without a date. There is an adjournment. They will say, okay, let's adjourn to one week. Let's adjourn to the next month. So that certain things ought to be done. Let the lawyers and the parties do all of those things before we come the next date. But there are certain situations where the court will feel that they shouldn't hold the parties to a date. They should give them a blank check. So they go and do everything they need to do properly before they come back. So it will say the matter has been adjourned sine die, meaning indefinitely. Your journalist should be using the word indefinitely, not to come and say sine die to confuse you. Then you mentioned terms like mandamus, sesio rai rai. Mandamus is simply an order of the court that says that you have the duty as a public official to perform a certain mm. function or duty. And you don't seem to be performing it. So mandamus is directed at you as an order compelling you to do that which you are paid to do, to do which you are failing to do. Seshorari is to say that something has happened which is wrong, patently wrong, perhaps, in the face of the law. So, it is supposed to be quashed. Did I use another big word? You did. <laughs> so it is supposed to be uh, quashed. Quash is English. <laughs> so normally, when you hear that they are going for sexual they are going to say, um, somebody has done something wrong in right. law, and they should throw it away because they didn't do it in the right way. Absolutely. That's what we mean by sexual right. So they could go. A, a, a court has given a judgment, and they feel that maybe a, a lower court, not like a lower court, maybe a high court has given a judgment, and the other party feels that the judge did something that is so patently wrong, that is, does not accord with law. They can go to the Supreme Court and ask the Supreme Court for a sociorari right to quash wow. the thing that they have done. Right, you're still here on the law. This is your legal light. It is your health law uh, covering the courts the law through the eyes of journalists. And now to that question. Yes. How do you resolve that dilemma? So one thing that I always tell the other, my other colleagues is, one thing about court reporting, that one minute that you are missing, even one second submission from the lawyer, the lawyer will get you confused. Mm. Yes. Because the whole thing is technical let alone missing and go into the middle of the thing. So if you go when the case has already started, the chances are that over 60% of it are you already confused. So my, my, my um, ideology is be there, they call it, follow it. If there's a case of political interest, sometimes after court you want to engage parties. 
So that is why if you are not independent and you don't understand what happened in court, you will sue it. You will be misled. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. There are moments where after court you are asking a lawyer for explanation, the explanation he is giving you will just be shaking your head. <laughs> because you know that he just wants you to uh, go with his yeah. side of it. And mm -hmm. that is where if you don't get it, mm -hmm. you'll be wrong. Mm -hmm. I don't do that. I've been watching you guys interview the, uh, not the lawyers who are doing the case often, but... but Party lawyers Absolutely. who have come to court, Absolutely. say uh, in the uh, ambulance trial, Sami Jemfi is there. Say, uh, what is his name? Uh, Nanabi is Nanabi. there. Absolutely. Then you finish the court, they are the ones granting you interviews. Absolutely. And they, they are seeking so, to confuse you. So I'll, I'll take a quick break. <laughs> I'll be back for Mutala to continue his explanation. And then Latif will also share with us. We'll be right back. You're welcome back. And Latif Idrisu just joined us. And join us from where we are. How do you overcome that dilemma of seeking explanations after court or even before court on matters of a case you are reporting on with the partisan lawyer commentaries, commentators? Yeah. <laughs> I think I've suffered uh, on that particular score that you Oh, just, you have? I have suffered. Let's hear it. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm very young in this courts and legal affairs reporting and all of that. You have been doing it for how long now? Less than a month. Less than a month. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. And I've had, I've had the uh, fact... Less than a month as a dedicated court correspondent. Correspondent, yes. But in your life as a reporter... You have been to the court to report once in a yeah, while. Yeah, 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 right. yeah, yeah. So it had to do with the, the case of Okujitua Blakwa mm -hmm. and uh, Reverend, Reverend Kusi mm -hmm. So it's, the case is at the Court of Appeal. Yes. <laughs> and we were there for, for a hearing on Okujitua's application for Reverend Kusi own application to be dismissed by the court. That's what essentially he's asking the appeals court to do. Mm. And then I sat through, Muntala was there, we all sat through, listened to the ruling by the panel of judges. Mm. And the ruling was that the grounds on which Kusi Boateng's lawyers wanted the court to rule in their favor were struck out. Quickly, I, I picked up my phone, did the story unknowingly that I was not getting it entirely accurate as the court had declared. So we did the story and, but before we did the story, we wanted explanation from... Your story said that the <laughs> Court of Appeal has thrown out an application filed by Reverend Kusi Boatin, Secretary to the Board of Trustees of the National Cathedral <laughs> Project. Correct. Correct. Good. It was not accurate. <laughs> Yeah, so, so, yes, go on. so we wanted clarification from a uh, lawyer for Kusi Boatin, Bobby Banson. But I think in his mind, we were trying to get him to go on record. So he said, no, 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 we should go to the court's registry for the information. So he left. We interviewed the member of parliament. He was happy about the ruling of the court and all of that. So based on that, I did this particular story that you just read the headline. And it wasn't entirely accurate. Later on, I got to find out that the, the grounds were what the Court of Appeals struck out and not the application in itself. So the application is still sitting at the court, mm. but then the grounds on which he wanted the application to the Court of Appeal to rule on were what the Court of Appeal struck out. And it's, it's a lesson, it's something I've learned, but unfortunately for, for me, I've learned it the hard way I've suffered my first, I mean, uh, defeat, if you like, <laughs> as, as a legal affairs. So, Reverend Kusi Boateng's lawyers had two applications that were sitting in the court pending a decision. They had filed an application asking the court to allow them to amend their grounds of appeal. Okay? Right. Remember, there was a contempt. Yes. that they filed to hold Okujeto for, for contempt. Yeah. In the sense that 
when the court processes were being sought to be served on him, he sort of brushed them aside in front of a Metro TV yeah. premises, right? Okay. Now, the High Court found that the processes were not as accurate as what the uh, Kusibuatin's lawyers were claiming. Okay. So they dismissed, the High Court dismissed the application and said Okujeto will not be held in contempt because he has not committed contempt. Okay. Then they filed an appeal. Then they sought to amend their grounds. You are allowed to amend your grounds. You are going to the Court of Appeal complaining that the High Court has given a decision. That decision is wrong okay. on a number of grounds and you give the grounds. Sometimes we file the notice of appeal when we don't have a copy of the decision yet. So we actually indicate that we will file additional grounds okay. when we have a copy of the decision. Okay. Okay. So they ask to be given time, allowed to file additional, uh, to amend their grounds. grounds. And then once they amend their grounds, they're supposed to file what you call the written submissions which is their argument. And they had an application to asking that since we are amending, you should also allow us an extended time to file our what? Written, written submissions. submissions. These were the applications that were pending. <laughs> <laughs> and then on the day when the two were going to be heard, mm. the lawyers for Kujeto raised an objection okay. yeah. to a member, the absence so the, of a member of the panel. Yeah, panel yeah. And then they had to deal with that and said, make your argument will come and rule on that. So on the day, they come to give the decision, and the decision is that you have objected to, first, we have to state that, you have objected to the absence of a particular panel. We have found that, and you reported that, I followed you. You reported that they said they didn't give a good basis for the objection yeah. and all of that, so that was thrown out. How come you were reporting as if you are reporting about the real substantive matter? Yeah, so that's that's <laughs> that's the so that's it. this is this is sometimes what happened. Mm. So in court reporting, it is about what happened yesterday and you are continuing today. That's right. Yes. Mm. So if you miss what happened yesterday, the chances are that what will happen today, you'll be confused mm -hmm. or you go and report something that you will not be actually correct. Yeah. Okay. So if you follow from the contempt at the high court and the fact that the court one of the things that the judge said was that Reverend Kusi Boatin's application is full of inconsistencies. Mm -hmm. the, court, the court, even at a point in time, indicated that one Kobnet Bijen fee and then Reverend Kusi, Kusi Boatin, Boatin, they are two different people, so the GRA mm -hmm. should investigate that. So if they come to Court of Appeal, ask yourself, why are they at appeal? Then it means once the case has moved from the High Court, then it means somebody is not happy at what has been taken at the High, the high court. court. So now you go to the Court of Appeal. And just because you go to the Court of Appeal, you are meeting three, three judges from one, one wise man or one wise woman <laughs> to three of them. Now, like you indicated. So when they had appeal like that, you ask yourself, and <clears throat> something, this is one of the uh, moments that probably you can also educate people. I've heard people say uh, an appeal scored, an appeal scored, an appeal scored, and yeah. I get mad at it. Maybe because I've been at the environment for quite some <laughs> time. The high court can ask for an appeal scored. So when they are referring to the court of appeal, then it's an appeal scored. You get it. So sometimes people get us, you know, if you are referring to the Court of Appeal where three judges sit, mm. then it's Court of Appeal. We, the High Court can take appeal from the criminal appeal from the circuit court. So that one, that state, the High Court can act as an mm. appeals court. So we yeah. get all these things. Then once you get to the Court of Appeal, then you're asking. So that day when we were in court, we know that it's Reverend Kusi Boateng who is appealing. <laughs> but the case was read and it was Ukujetua Blakwa, who is the applicant? Yes. So you get them right. Like, because they, they had an application, they, they sought to Absolutely. they so, sought to argue that some of the grounds that they had they had should be struck off. Absolutely. So that is where the that confusion... application was actually granted. Yes. Their objection was overruled about the panel. The panel their objection absolutely. was overruled. And then Reverend Kusi Boatin's lawyers also their prayer for the extension of time yes. was also granted. Absolutely. For so, them to so that was, that was when I was even you, you are getting to a point. Uh, was, Before we forget. <laughs> Before was, we get to a point. Mm -hmm. Yes. You, you were interrupted. So please continue. I want to build up from where. Uh -huh. I, okay. So that was where the confusion started. That the 
application by Okujeto, the Court of Appeal upheld his application. Mm -hmm. In my mind, oh, <laughs> then that's it. <laughs> you know, so... It, it, it is so not, it the, is no, don't, don't interrupt him. Let's hear him. The, the attention wasn't on what exactly his application was. Right. In my mind, Okujeto's application was that strike out the application of Reverend Kusibuati and not the, the grounds. Right. You know, so that was where the confusion... Yeah. So, so the main know, appeal from. is it's there. It's still there. Nothing has happened to yeah. it. Yeah. There were some grounds, grounds that Okujeto's lawyer felt should be struck off. Yeah. So there can be as many as maybe three, four, five, six grounds. And then somebody can successfully knock off one ground. Do you get it? Yeah. So they knocked off some oh. grounds that they said shouldn't be there. That doesn't mean that the main thing yeah. has suffered. It sit there, yeah. nothing had happened. In fact, the same day, the court granted extension of time okay. to the lawyers for Kusibuati to Just file their written okay. submissions. Yeah, yeah. Right. So you, you said, how, did, what, was, your, was your dilemma leading to the inaccurate reporting informed by political commentator lawyers around the place? Or this was no, no, not This was on my own, not at all. <laughs> because on that day, there were no political lawyers around. All right. It was just Okujito who came out and then spoke with the okay. media and then left. Okay. So it wasn't based on any political... Right. You know. when, tell us again. So in this very short time you have been doing, and you are also in court, and you are going through uh, cross-examination <laughs> and the rest of it. So it is helping you... Yeah. in how to learn in your reporting, yeah. is it? It is, it is. How useful is that? So, so for instance, hearing the third accused in the ambulance procurement trial, mm. I mean... Third accused is Richard Jakpa. Richard Jakpa. Okay. You, you could tell how careful he is in responding to some of the questions put to him no, by... He, is he not second accused or third? He's the third. third. Okay. The second it's, accused has been left. The second accused is the one who was... Sylvester There was a... Uh, uh, a nolly prosequi. Yeah. The director was removed. Yeah. Okay, good. So, so again, one of those terms, right? <laughs> yeah, we'll yeah. come to it. <laughs> so, you could tell that he's, he's careful in his responses to the answers given to him. Mm. And let me just make this point about <clears throat> how, how impressive it was when Godfrey Dami started cross examining uh, Richard Jabba. If you look, Outside the courtroom, in the court of public opinion, the acrimonious relationship that has been created after the release of the audio recording and all of that, one would have thought that when the attorney general comes face to face with Richard Jappa, it was going to be fiery and fireworks. Mm. But you could tell, even at a point, you could see both of them I mean, having a smile at each other within the courtroom when uh, the attorney general was cross-examining Richard Jappa. So, for me, being in, to answer your question, being in the witness box myself, knowing that every word you, you make okay. is taken into account, is recorded in the courtroom. I am careful when I'm sitting in the courtroom listening to the procedure ongoing by the questions that have been asked and the responses that have been given. Right. When I came in, Mutala was making a point about if you, are not, if you miss a minute of a proceeding, it could derail your entire reportage. Completely. Absolutely. Completely. So, so I've suffered that fate. For instance, this, this same court of appeal issue had to do with the fact that I was there for the first time. I hadn't followed the case. And so I was, I was missing a lot. Mm -hmm. So it could, have a, it, it could take a toll on, on you right. as a reporter if, That's right. if you've not followed the case through so, and so, through. So let me tell you, as I, as I listened to you and watched you reporting, you were in the courtroom whilst the proceedings were ongoing, but your media house called you out exactly. so you could give a certain report. Exactly. And then as you reported, you said, the judge is about to do ABC. Then they said, let's let you go so you can follow it. Exactly. And I was telling myself, by the time you get in there, <laughs> you're going to face it. Exactly. <laughs> so, so. Uh, maybe I can say this. This is our own platform. <laughs> yeah. I, I fight a lot with the producers of the, of the midday show, right. midday news, because they want you to come. Mami Esi is here. She will testify. To, <laughs> we always fight. Mami Esi is the producer of the show. <laughs> yes. And she's also part of the producers of the midday news. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, Latif, we want to speak with you briefly. I said, no, the, the judge has said 
it's underway. If I step out, I'm going to miss a lot and it will affect my portage. Oh, please, we will just have you briefly and all of that. It doesn't help me, <laughs> you know, but for the sake of the news. And sometimes you step out and you are not being put online. Exactly. Immediately. You have to wait for like three minutes. So you are losing a few minutes. A few minutes. But those few minutes can be very crucial. Very, very exactly. Right. Very, very crucial. You, you suffered that? Absolutely. So mm. some, at some point in time, I'll tell the people, I'm not able to pick at this particular point in time. Okay. But the challenge is that you are there for the people at midday. That's right. And exactly midday. Because you yes, need to update absolutely. the populace. So, <laughs> at the, one of the settings, when the issue of the unsanctioned audio mm -hmm. was brought to the attention of the judge. So the judge was about to make a determination on what to happen. Then I had a call. The, the decision of the court is much more significant. <laughs> if I miss it and somebody else is explaining yeah. to me, I don't get it. That Let's way. talk about the unsanctioned audio. Yeah. What is the allegation? What is the allegation about? So he was the deputy attorney general. Mm -hmm. On that day before, Richard Agua was already in the witness box. I, yes, yeah. Yes. And then he, uh, after Trevor was stood up and he, he caught the attention of the judge and said, there is a, an audio recording circulating on some WhatsApp platforms. Not the Richard Jaguar recording the attorney general one? No. Oh, okay. So okay. this is a court proceedings that is being recorded and part of it is circulating on as the court was doing its work Someone, somebody recorded it yeah and circulated it on some okay. whatsapp platform and and the deputy attorney general says what's wrong with that that the court the court hasn't sanctioned anyone to record the the post, apart from the court record itself mm -hmm. nobody has been allowed to record the proceedings of the court right and so he found that problematic and that's why he brought the attention of the judge to it mm -hmm. and i don't know if mutala has information on what has happened because the, the, judge, the judge said what she ordered the national security to investigate so we don't I know what has investigate become. who did the recording yes, yes of sir. the court proceeding yes the court proceeding that the public was allowed in yeah to observe, mm -hmm. somebody recorded, yeah. and that is a problem. Yeah. Okay. So you notice that when you are even entering the court, the first thing that greets you is switched off your phone. Mm -hmm. It's there. And in a courtroom, you are not allowed to do any form of recording, audio, video, and other stuff. So on that day, when the parties have announced them, themselves, then the deputy attorney general brought you the attention. At the last court sitting, somebody recorded the proceedings and it's circulating on social media. And the judge was like, how? How is that possible? Because right. in, the news, in the courtroom, you don't record That's right. audio, video, nothing, pictures, mm -hmm. nothing. Then just if you say, what's about you, a judge of the Court of Appeal, who is presiding over the case as an additional high court judge, mm. indicated that, okay, then let me retire. Let me see the audio that you are talking about. Then I'll make a decision. But before she even retired, she said, if that was the case, then it means the court will clear the court. And only the parties, the accused, and their lawyers, and then the uh, prosecution. Nobody else would So they retired. And at the point in time, they didn't go with Mr. Jakba and Dr. Kassila to force. Yeah. The parties went there. And at the point in time, we noticed that they, they called, called the accused persons. Yeah. Then they went in there. And when the court resumed sitting, immediately the Attorney General walked in. Then Mr. Tadio Sorry, who is representing Mr. Jakpa, the third accused, requested for some time to engage the attorney. So just if I said watch approach, you went in the key, then he came back. Whatever they discussed, they didn't, they didn't say it enough. You know. Then the judge made the directive on an order that the first one was for national security to, to investigate, investigate circumstances mm -hmm. leading to To find out who absolutely. did that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Then number two, a caution to everybody in the courtroom that if should that happen again, it means the court will hear the case in camera, and it's one of the terms that... That means the, op, the public will not have access to the court hearing, Absolutely. the court proceedings, okay. including you, the journalist. Absolutely. Okay. So, so was that was the second one. Yes. Okay. And then a caution to the journalists also in the court. And we do know, mm. because we have had trainings, a yes. lot of trainings. You are one of the court-accredited reporters. Absolutely. Good. So we have trainings from the judiciary, from... Uh, institutions. Actually, a booklet was done, Absolutely. very small one, Absolutely. with all these jargons and the in practices there. in there for you to be Absolutely. reading. So mm -hmm. for those who are accredited, we know that these are red lines that you don't cross. Mm -hmm. So for us, we know that it will not be any of us. What did uh, Justice said, Dennis A.J., one of those who took you through that training, Absolutely. what did he tell you you are likely to suffer if you recorded 
a live court proceedings. That's, that's a contempt of court. Contempt, contempt of, court. of court. So you could go to jail. Absolutely. You go so to, you know that. Absolutely. So right. that is at the back of our mind. Mm. And all we do know, the only court recording that you get is the one that they tie. Mm -hmm. If you miss anything, and I do yes. that a lot. Let me quickly you check You apply for yeah. the record of proceedings, right. and then you are granted. So that is why mm. Justice Sefia Sewa Sarebuche indicated, used that word, that unsanctioned yeah. audio. Yes. So that is not allowed. All right. And I remember in the trial of the high treason, mm. the alleged coup, mm -hmm. one of the accused persons at the time, he made it a point that at the time the, the proceedings was going on, he would be recording. And one point in time, he wasn't lucky. Mm. He wanted to record before he realized he was rather playing one of the playing recordings. One of the recordings. Mm. <laughs> so the whole courtroom, you know how quiet the whole courtroom would be. Yeah. And then Justice Sefia Sewa Saribu. So we thought somebody had even on a radio or something. Or we could hear Justice Sefia Sewa's voice. You know, if she's presiding over the case, how passionate, how yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. And I was like, who, who is that? Who has recorded? And before he realized, an accused person. Who's okay. Doing his own recording, and mm. that almost caused because he was on bail at the time. That almost caused him. Right. But so of course I, I, was going I, to focus. I was I was looking for something to share with you. Sure. Um, I think we should open the phone lines now. Time runs, eh? Absolutely. <laughs> because there's quite a lot. I think you guys have that we can share, sure. and yet time just caught up with us. About ten minutes or less to go. <clears throat> now this is section ninety six of the Court Act. So the Court Act is the law that regulates what goes on in the courtroom. Section 969 says recording of proceedings before a court. In any proceedings before a court, the court may cause oral evidence to be recorded by shorthand, tape recorder, or by such other means as the Chief Justice may determine. The recording shall be done by an officer of the court. <clears throat> Underline that. Not a journalist. And not someone who has gone <laughs> to uh, watch proceedings. An officer of the court or any other person appointed for that purpose. A record, a record taken under subsection 1 shall be transcribed by a person referred to in subsection 2. And the transcript shall be for all purposes shall for all purposes be the official record of the proceedings in question. Before any person other than the judge, chairman of a regional tribunal or the magistrate records or transcribes any evidence under this section, an oath shall be tended to be taken by that person for the accurate and faithful recording of that evidence. It says an officer of the court who has once duly taken the oath shall not again be required to take the oath in respect of the same or of any subsequent case. Guys, those of you who go to the court to re uh, report matters and those of you who just attend for cases that you are allowed to sit in, the rule is that you are not allowed to record, as he, uh, Motala just said. If you record, put your phone or any device to record and you are caught, you are in contempt of court. Contempt of court means you could go to prison. But what the judges normally do for that is if you didn't know that this was against the rule and you did it, they won't throw you into prison. They may uh, put you into a certain cell for the duration of the case. Uh, but if it is so bad, you may spend maybe a night in jail so you learn your lessons. Something. Because the court has a recorder, somebody who does the recording. The person who does that has sworn an oath to make sure that the recording is accurate. When they finish the recording, they transcribe it, they type it out. When they type it out, the judge will look through it to confirm, verify that everything is accurate before the judge will sign off and it becomes the official record of the court. If you take something out like that without it being signed off, it is not official record of the court and you can cause trouble. That's why the law does not allow it. And then he spoke about in camera. The judge said they may do the case in camera, meaning persons will not be allowed to sit in the court. The court is a public place, somewhat. But there are cases that are heard in camera, like divorce. 
child custody matters. It's just the parties involved and the lawyers involved. They go into the chambers of the court or, the, as he said, the court is cleared so that there's only the lawyers and the parties involved. You don't want to hear about someone's marital issues and their child custody matters. Let's pick this call quickly. Felix, you are calling from Tamale. Let's hear you. Hello, Felix. Yes, Let's something. hear you. Yes, something. Please. My name is uh, Felix, calling from Tamale. Yes, Felix, go I on, go to, on. Yes, I want to. Uh, I want you to help me clarify uh, about the court proceeding. Straight to the point. Yes. So, for instance, if I record a court proceeding that is of a public interest uh, matter, for instance, for instance, a political case. Wouldn't that bring transparency to, the, to, 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 to everybody who is listening to... Uh, thank you, maybe... thank you, Felix. I have explained that and quoted uh, Section 69 of the Courts Act to explain it. You are forbidding, you are prohibited, you are not allowed under law to record the proceedings of the court. If you are watching even foreign uh, court sittings in America, elsewhere, you see that even when they take cameras in there, they don't cover the individuals. They will always use drawings to represent the people. And you never hear them play a video recording or a recording of the court sitting to the public. What you can have, if it's in the public interest, the matter is finished for the day. You are allowed to apply for a certified true copy of the proceedings, and you'll be giving a copy. Uh, Seth, you're calling from Takwa. Let's hear you. Straight to the question, please. Yes. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Yes, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, yes, I, yes, I just wanted to you to address an issue for me. Uh, I'm a victim, you see, uh, of uh, an aspect in which uh, the other party uh, insurance quality life everything was all, had all expired. Uh, such a very sweet word thing. And yes, it traveled, this case traveled two years. Eventually, uh, I had to protest. And then this matter, the judge, you know, strangely the judge was rather surprised that the case had traveled that length uh, because uh, he had just discovered that the, the, the accused person okay, Seth, you do this for me. Seth, 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 listen to me. Uh, the, we'll take your number, and then we'll speak to you right after the show. Um, I can see that we need to have a, a second a edition. Second. <laughs> you guys must be ready. Absolutely. And then maybe get one or two more of your colleagues to join us. Maybe a lady. A female, a lady. Yeah, yeah, not yeah. Uh, you or <laughs> Pastor Strong uh, sitting in here. Yes. Um, yes, yeah, so... What do you enjoy about the reporting from the courtroom? The fact that you get first-hand testimony from accused persons who have been cross-examined. For me, it's, it's like a privilege sitting in the courtroom, hearing it for the first time before you relay it to the, the public to, for consumption. All for right. me... <clears throat> for me, that is, Thank you. That is what I enjoy the most. Well, for me, it's all about the fact that the whole country is in court and you have that privilege to be able to explain to people mm. what is happening in court, big cases and all that. That's an absolute privilege, very interesting one for me. Right. And you remember, of, I began from reading Article 125 of the Constitution, which said justice emanates from the people. So the people are entitled to know what goes on in the particularly if it's a public interest matter. And so we'll continue, uh, hopefully, hopefully next week uh, with the journalist and also allow you sufficient time. We'll do about 30 minutes and the rest of the 30 minutes, we'll ask you to ask them questions yourselves and then we'll all share in all the jargons and the things that are misleading or that you don't seem uh, to understand. They go through a certain training. They will also share that with us. I'm Samson Ladi Anyanini. It's your legal rights. It is your help law. In fact, Edi uh, Ayambono uh, was asking a question whether um, the court reporters are lawyers themselves. 
Let's deal with that the next time. My guests have been Latif Idrisu, legal affairs correspondent, Joy News, and Mutala Inusa. Latif has been reporting for only one month. <laughs> Mutala Inusa, <laughs> legal affairs correspondent for EIB Network, has been reporting for over a decade. This is the law. It's your legal rights. It's your help law.